so many of you I know are kind of struggling with this. So I have to get over my shyness, I guess, and help you by sending these videos. The first thing I do when I practice, I literally take it one quarter time. So at eight, measure 110, we are at 105. So I'm going to set my metronome to 105 and I'm going to play every single 16th note with the beat. Now I also have the backbeat playing because when I observed some of the submissions, what I saw was uh, fingers that trip. Now the cure to that is this little exercise. When I play this slow, I am analyzing every single one of my movements and how it works. So here's your third finger on the backbeat. Set your second finger. What happens is your fingers always fall behind the bow. So if you practice once forcing it to go before the bow, it kind of makes it line up. So let's do that now. Play right along with me. Make sure you practice it in exactly the same condition as when you would play it fast. Don't play it with long bows and huge bows. If you want to do intonation practice, that's okay. Now I'm not perfect, but I'm just here to help. Check your A. One, two, ready, play. Right. So hopefully that'll help. I've taken my metronome down to 60. I still have the backbeat playing because I don't want to get lost between beats. I want to be absolutely accurate about my rhythm. And I'm going to add the dotted rhythm. And then you reverse the rhythm. One, two, one, two, ready, go.
So I know I make faces when I make mistakes, but um, you really do. Like I talk about, you got to obliterate that met metronome. You, you, and I, every now and then I heard it. It's like, oh darn, missed it. So you just, it's a work in progress. All right. Then from 60, you would take it up you know, a little faster. And I'm going to let you do that um, just for time's sake. Now, as much as you can vary it, it really helps. It helps the brain learn it in, in different ways and makes it stronger. I, I'm kind of the idiot child of a very smart family and it was kind of hard growing up. <laughs> and um, so I got a lot of nerves when I played. I would get very nervous. And I find that when I get nervous, if I can fill my brain with, with as much music as I possibly can, it pushes out the nerves. Like, you know, they say, you know, um, you know, think of the audience in their underwear. No way. <laughs> don't want that image. But also, um, you don't even want to think about the audience. I don't want you to think about the recording. Name the notes in your head. It, it also improves reading. You're going to become a terrific. Count the rhythm as you're playing. Fill your brain with as much of the, be in, into the music as much as you can. So also to make it stronger, you're going to practice it in different ways. So we are, um, there's a whole bunch of rhythms you can do. We just did two, but here's uh, two others that are my favorite. You're going to do eighth note, triple sixteenth. Now I had to stop and take this slower before I could demo it, but for time. So before you try this one, you might want to practice it very slow for a little bit to get your mind set. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to play one eighth note and then three sixteenths through the pattern. One, two, ready, go. find other ways. We, I had a great suggestion the other day that you accent different notes. So I'm still going slow, but I could do an accent. Um, it was suggested on the second beat. Naturally, we should play one on the first beat. Um, all beats have their roles. The first beat in any measure is like the CEO of the company. That is the strong one. Um, the second beat would be the um, the person in this, the vice president, uh, the backbeat of the second beat leads into the first. So that's actually like the assistant to the first beat. And the backbeat of the first beat leads into the second. And that is the assistant to the second. If you think of it in four, four, it's a little easier. First beat, CEO. Third beat, vice president. Fourth beat, assistant to the CEO higher than the second beat, which is the assess assistant to the third beat, the, the vice president. They all have their roles. So when you play a set of 16th notes, you keep that microcosm inside those 16th notes as well. So if you alter that, your brain is going to work harder to figure it out. So even if you're going slow, you're pushing your brain to process this information. So I can go really slow. I'm at 60. The piece is at 150, uh, 105. One, two, 
one and two and. So that's another technique you can use. Remember, don't practice things over and over the same way. So the definition of insanity is doing the same thing the same way and expecting a different outcome. You have to change it. So find a creative, use all your creativity. Um, so then the next one that is a very common practice technique is bowing techniques. So even with the accent, I was able to, you know, work on my bow stroke a little bit while I'm working on these 16th notes and it saves time. Now, when you want to do the bowing, all these bowing uh, issues have different, the string crossings have different problems. So you can analyze them through in a different way. So the easiest way is let's just slur all the 16th notes. One, two, ready, go. And you could do an eight um, bowing. You could do two and two plus two. You can play around with it, but you've got to keep your mind like, oh, I got to focus. There's something new here. Otherwise, your mind's just going to kind of glaze over a little bit, and you're going to waste time. Now, of course, we need to learn how to play it faster. So the next technique I use, I call it the Lego practice. The Lego practice is you're going to take little blocks. Now, depending on some of my kids, I tease them. You know, sometimes the block has to be two notes, all right? Depends on your level and what you need. It never matters how long it takes you to learn something. It's it's only the skill you acquire. So I get some pushback. I'm, I, A, I, I've seen a lot of brain studies about how bad grades are for kids. What's great is skill level. And we have the capability to test so that we know where kids are because kids love video games. What level are you on? I'm on level 12. It's like, great. You know, nobody says, I'm 12. You know, but if you say somebody's a D, they're just, they feel devastated. So, uh, you know, my skill level is not maybe as high as I want right now, but that's okay because I'm just growing and I'm learning. Um, the, the next thing is uh, going to be practice in Lego practice. I take little pieces. Maybe it's just two notes. Now I add another one. Okay, so far so good. All right, now I'm gonna go uh, another one. Okay, good. Now another one. That is my first Lego ball block, right to there. Now I'm gonna practice the next block. Um, I'm going to put it in, but remember, when you play your A and your D, you must cover that fifth with your finger. You can't hop fast enough. It's, it's not going to work. Okay, here we go.
That's the full block. So the block, it's a Lego because you have to play five notes minimum. It's always an odd number. So the block goes to the beginning of the next little Lego piece so that you eventually can connect it. If I just do four notes, it's never gonna have a connection. So after you work hard at playing, you add, and then you add. Okay, now that's a larger Lego block. And then you work at the next little Lego block until you have every single Lego block solid and complete, and then you start building your tower or your piece here until it's nice and very, very solid.